You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 20th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are recording this on our 10th wedding anniversary to guilt you into smashing that like button. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. There's no guilt in podcasting. No, no. <laughs> No, not when you have a delete button. You can just make the whole pass go away. I mean, I'm sorry. I was confusing us with uh, the Beltway Media. Beltway Media just pretends that uh, 20 years doesn't exist. History started yesterday, and everything that happened in the last 48 hours is the only thing that ever happened. There's no causality. There's no history. There's there's just narrative. There's There's just today's narrative. Yeah. They live in the eternal now, which is cool if you're like a Zen monk, but- uh, if you're the news media who is allegedly charged with talking about why things are the way they are, um, it, it's a catastrophe. And it's been a catastrophe for for decades now. I mean, this is something that we – basically our podcast is a critique of culture, politics, and media. And the media has been a shithole for as long as you or I have been paying attention to it uh, in our adult lives. And before we get into that – negative weeds because i think a lot of people have turned off the news this week because it's just too much to bear and i totally understand that Uh um i i got a copy of mary trump's new book on healing the nation okay after trump Mm -hmm. and you will be pleased drift glass to know that in chapter one from Uh the beginning of this book i am bracing myself you know where you know the timeline where she begins her book no Take a guess, and I'll tell you how many years off you are. (laughs) Uh, 1948. 1865. Oh, bless her heart. That's Well, that's that's true. That's very true. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Uh She starts with 1865, and she's talking about white failure. Does she then jump immediately to Reagan? No. No, okay. (laughs) She goes into Jim Crow, and I mean, I would just leave through it because it just arrived. But, you know, this is... This is the issue. It's mm-hmm. it's tied back to race over and over again, tied back to money over and over again. Uh-huh. The fact that Congress people can own individual stocks, members of the press corps can own individual stocks and never have to disclose what their bias is based on their own financial advantage. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Rand Paul's wife owned Regeneron stock. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't have to report it for eight months, and it's a five-minute story. Oh, 16 months, I think. 16 months. Yeah. yeah. It's a five-minute story. Oh, yeah. Well, and it's it's a five-minute story because the people involved in the reporting of that story are deeply complicit with the people committing the That's crimes. That's it. And it's and the so, same yeah. with Afghanistan. It is the same thing. War is good for ratings. Well, and victory is good for ratings. And vi- Well, yeah. And dramatic video... Yes. That creates a narrative that, oh, look, Joe Biden has a flaw or oh, no. failed yeah. or we can we can automatically balance the scales between Republicans and Democrats is the problem. Well, it occurs to me um, this week when we dropped off middle child at school. At college. I told her, college. go to college. At college. <laughs> we had our hugs and everything. And then I just pointed at her dorm mm-hmm. room and I said, Go to college. (laughs) That according to any sane theory of the case, we should have been out of Afghanistan a couple of months before she was born. She was born in July of 2002. uh That that the war, the war. Actually, Drift Glass, she's a 9-11 baby. Yeah. Um, The uh, hospital, when I had her, they had uh, 47 babies that weekend. Now, I will... I mean, this is getting too personal probably by half, but I was going through infertility treatment at the time that I got pregnant with middle child, just like I had with my first child. Mm-hmm. So we were trying and planning and trying and planning, but there were a lot of people who were not planning to get pregnant mm-hmm. the, the two weeks after 
and got pregnant because that's how you comfort each other. And it's you're right. stuck at home watching terrible things on television. And there's a ba- baby boomlet mm-hmm. um, in July of 2022, mm-hmm. 20, 2002, excuse me, 2002. And all the nurses were exhausted. It was so sad for them. I mean, nothing like it is today. Right. But right. Uh, it, it was a very busy maternity ward that weekend. And uh, yeah, so. 20 years later, here's here's middle child going off to college and this war hopefully is is really over. Well, and that's the thing. The the and the reason we jumped right into um the media. Mm-hmm. There's a lot there's an enormous amount to talk about and we're only going to talk about a fraction of it because this is not a 74-hour Hal Sparks marathon Foreign. podcast. <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless his heart. <laughs> Watching my pillow guy for 3 days. Yeah. Um but it, it is important to talk about what we do is the larger picture, the larger context of what we're seeing right in front of us. And the mm-hmm. larger context is that the eternal war that we on the left have been waging against the right and the establishment and the Beltway media over memory, over remembering how exactly things got to be the way they are and how we got into Afghanistan in this case and why we stayed 19 years too long and how we got out. All of that, the whole that whole timeline is the story. And if you take out, if you slice off the last couple of weeks and say, no, no, the whole story is right here. Everything that happened before that, no, 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 don't worry about that. That is exactly how we have gotten this country very nearly broken beyond repair. Mm -hmm. The idea that the people who control the cameras and the microphones do not want to talk about the past. Because in the past, if you go back to the past, those people should all be uh, run out of town on a rail. They're the ones who got us into this fucking mess in the first place over and over and over. Again. Pick your mess, pick, pick the fuck up. And you'll find that the mainstream media is devoted to not talking about cause and effect, but, but by putting red ants and black ants in a jar and watching them fight. So you might remember, because you listeners have been at this for a very long time as well, mm-hmm. that once upon a time, there was an actual debate over what the nature of our reaction to 9-11 should be. Right. That. There's a, there was a strong reaction on the left that this was a police action, that this was a terrorist attack by non-state actors who were largely Saudi and funded by, by the bin Laden family, who, I must remind you, funded the, the Bush family and mm-hmm. is the second richest family in Saudi Arabia, or they were at the time, mm-hmm. um, that this was not the country of Afghanistan declaring war on the United States. Right. And so what we needed to do is go in, capture the people who did this, bring them to the U.S. and try them as criminals, which is what they were. And you might recall that the people who who suggested that that might be a re- reasonable course of action were were called traitors and terrorist loving scum. And and mm-hmm. bl- you and I were on the on the butt end of that kind of bullshit for mm-hmm. years. And, and don't know? forget that 9-11 was not the first attempted attack on no. the Twin Towers. No. And and people had been put on trial for attempting to destroy the Twin Towers in the past. Yeah. So it this, worked. This, and this time they were successful. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, is, this was after George W. Bush failed to do the one job he had to do in the Middle East. I'm sorry, not in the Middle East, in Afghanistan. It's not part of the Middle East. Uh, capture Bin Laden and the 9-11 plotters. Mm -hmm. He let them go. He let them slip through his fingers in the Tora Bora region. After he failed at his one fucking job, Mm -hmm. he decided, hey, let's let's rebuild this nation into a a robust market economy that's also a democracy. And And we'll do it with money and guns. Money and guns. And then we'll we'll put a holding force here because this won't be that hard. We'll just knock together a few... You know, heads. It worked and for we'll, the Russians. We'll you know, we can people. just sure. do it. <laughs> sure, we'll do it, and we will pivot over to the other country that has nothing to do with nine eleven, which is Iraq, and then we'll conquer them. And this was part well, of, as, as I wrote at the time during class, which was we did have an address for Public Enemy Number One Osama bin Laden, but we did have an address for Public Enemy Number Two Saddam Hussein. So right. we'll just go to his house, right, and, this and is, deliver the message that way. And that's and this what. Is, well, this Stuck is Tom. This was about right. Yeah, Tom I was going to say this is Tom Friedman's famous. We got to go over there and kick some ass. And mm-hmm. over there is just over there. And he, mm-hmm. someplace over in that general area, pick a fucking country. It doesn't matter. The whole area is dysfunctional. Go over there and tell him to suck on this. And Iraq was 
a U.S. funded ally in the Iran Iraq war. It was a country that we sold chemical weapons to, that Mm -hmm. Don Rumsfeld sold chemical weapons to during the Reagan administration. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, he was a known problem, a known threat. And it was an oil rich country. Afghanistan doesn't have shit that we want, but Iraq had a shit ton of oil. So suddenly, all the road to 9-11 leads right through Baghdad, blue gal. Mm-hmm. And you might know, mm-hmm. remember all the all the same meatheads who I'm sure later put on a Tea Party hat and later still put on a MAGA hat were all nodding their heads saying, yep, Saddam Hussein's behind that war. You know he is. You know he is. Mm-hmm. And so now we're off to country number two. So now we've been li- effectively lied into two different wars mm-hmm. that we are going to inevitably lose because they're both f- based on failed ideology. And this was the plan of Bill Crystal. And all of his neocon cronies. Yep. And the project for a project new American, for the Ameri- yeah. new American century going for you now, Bill. <laughs> and and I remember vividly, I, I can't find the video, but I remember vividly that once Iraq started to unravel and there was a slightest bit of pushback because Bill Crystal was a Fox News employee at this time. Mm-hmm. A, a, mm-hmm. The war pimp number one. Anyone who suggests and he he knew shit about the the, the region. He was the one who, who sort of poo-pooed the idea that Sunni and Shia couldn't get along as some sort right. of oh, come idiot, on. Yeah. some idiot high school theory of stuff. Who You guys don't know shit about what's going on. And he was all about, and he said, I, I swear, with fist clenched and red-faced, of course mm-hmm. we can conquer the whole region if we have the will to the do will it. To do, we have the, he literally said that, if we and have it was the like, will. Holy yeah. shit, it's, it's Dr. Strangelove. It's, it must just have the will to conquer the region. And well, you can just And hear- let's not forget, too, Drift Glass, that there were it, just a couple of run of the mill diplomatic bureaucrats in Iraq yep. who made sure that Dick Cheney didn't go into Iraq and start carving up oil fields yep. and said, We will stop you. We will resign. We are not going to let this happen. We will out you. Uh-huh. And that was the pl- the plan was Dick Cheney and his oil companies would go in carve the country carve up. it up yeah that was the plan that's why the the off the books meeting between Cheney and oil executives mm-hmm. where they destroyed the notes destroyed the maps and refused mm-hmm. to turn over any information to Congress was about carving up I assume the entire region because I assume yeah. the plan was we'll start in one country but we'll just keep decapitating regions and leaving troops behind to create a market-based economy and a democracy in a place where there's no chance of that ever happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, if you want to listen to someone speak intelligently about this, I suggest Tom Hartman, because pretty much all of the people who were completely fucking wrong about everything, Mm -hmm. about Iran and Iraq and uh, Afghanistan and 9-11 are all on television now. (laughs) And Tom Hartman's doing his thing. With with jobs for life. All all of the assholes out there who got us into this mess are, have all been have all have all memory hold all of their involvement. Washed in the now. blood of the lamb, Drift That's Glass. Right. That's right, man. They're all <laughs> forgiven. They're all shriven, and they're all sinless, and they're all telling us all what we should think about this shit. And I, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to not quote directly, but I will infer a quote from Charlie Pierce because Peter Weiner, you know, God's favorite right wing Christian who was, you know, he hated Trump, so he's our ally too. Uh, was just was just shrieking about Joe Biden on the Twitter the other day. Oh, and Charlie Pierce said, we tried to tell you these fuckers are vipers, that they're never going to change. These mm-hmm. these people are not your friends. Mm-hmm. They will they will stab you in the back of the drop of a hat. Look, look, look what they're doing. And this, the reason Afghanistan has, galls them is it was the first beachhead in the neoconservative plan to take over the entire region, to conquer the entire region for the greater, greater glory of American hegemony and oil. And, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they lost their, their first beachhead. I, yeah. I wrote this week that their first beachhead has become the last lines of the poem Ozymandias. You know, there's, there's nothing left. There's lone and level sand stretching out in all directions. The, the, all of their plans are trash. And there's no stomach because there was never any stomach to litigate this correctly in the first place. Because there was never any stomach to hold the Iraq war pimps accountable because there was never any stomach to hold the people um, who were media whores this entire time to make sure they, they never have another platform again. Tom Friedman still has a fucking job. Mm-hmm. David Brooks still has a job. Bill Crystal has a job. A lot of these people have a job in the liberal media now. And yeah. because there was never any stomach to properly litigate any of this, we're here we are having the same assholes as the leading spokespeople 
on the major cable networks talking about this little sliver of time at the end. Now, there's been a lot of bitching about, well, if, you know, why didn't Obama do anything about it? And you know what? Maybe that was his job. Maybe he should have pulled us out of Afghanistan. I firmly believe that no matter what happens, the minute you start start booking flights out of there, the whole country is going to collapse. Mm-hmm. The minute mm-hmm. anybody gets a whiff that the Americans are leaving, it's over. And it's mm-hmm. going to be chaos mm-hmm. no matter what you do. The minute, the minute you signal that you're not there for long term, it's game over. Because mm-hmm. there was never a country there. There were a series of regions – it doesn't have a government. It has a bunch of corrupt warlords. Very corrupt. Yeah. It took That's all what of we're our finding money. out. Yeah. It, it took all of our money and told us to fuck off. Mm-hmm. And I, I would urge you to remember, those of you who were furious that Barack Obama didn't do this earlier, and maybe he should have. Maybe he should have. Put your mind back during the Obama administration. Yeah, you have to do that. Not the remembered, you know, that, that sort of glowing, distant memory. The Republican Party was going to re- impeach him over wearing a goddamn tan suit. Mm-hmm. What would have what would they have done if Barack Obama announced that in 30 days or 90 days we're leaving Afghanistan? Or and whatever? brought about the very messy, very upsetting and disturbing pictures that we're seeing this week. Because that's what would have happened. They mm-hmm. would have had his ass out in a trice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They would have impeached him. There would have been nonstop. You see? Remember that apology tour I warned you about? Remember when he's going around apologizing? This is what you get when you elect a black man to the White House. Mm-hmm. This is what you get when you get one of those commie socialist liberals in the goddamn White House. That's all you would have heard. Mm-hmm. Nothing more would have been done. Mitch mm-hmm. McConnell and Sean Hannity and Fox News and Bill O'Reilly would have made that the story for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. Barack, they already think Barack Obama lost Iraq. Right. Right. But he lost two wars that Republicans were winning. Oh my God. You think Trump was bad now? Yeah. 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 (laughs) Um, So please put yourself in the context of what was happening at the time. And remember all the news coverage I watched over the last few days. And I, 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 I skipped a lot of it because a lot of it was just horrible people wagging their finger as if the past never happened. Mm-hmm. But I'm reminded of Michael Corleone talking to uh, Hyman Roth in with Godfather 2. With the Cuba II. cake, right? Yeah, with the Cuba cake. <laughs> and he's talking to Hyman Roth about what he saw in the streets of Cuba. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't want to spoil you know, a, a movie for you that was made in 1974. What, spoil Godfather 2. <laughs> yeah, but he, here's a spoiler. Cuba falls. <laughs> and, and, the, and the rebels take over. Yeah. But Michael Corleone says there was a guy being arrested by the police, and rather than be taken alive, he blew himself up along with the captain of the guard. And Hyman Roth says, what does this tell you? He said, well... He said, they're savages. Of course he did. That's what Hyman Roth said. Well, yeah. you know, they're savages. What well, are you going to do? Been, they've been rebels in the hills forever. Uh, don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Nothing's going to mm-hmm. happen. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. And Corleone says, Michael says, no, no, no. The, the, the police fight for money. And this the, the rebel fights for a cause. And this tells me they can win. Yeah, in they're Afghanistan, willing to die for the cause. Yeah. In Afghanistan, you have people who were who were fighting because the United States was bribing them mm-hmm. to be on our side. Mm-hmm. And they weren't even getting paid. Their mm-hmm. bosses were getting paid and they yeah. were getting screwed. Yep. I didn't realize this until yesterday because I am not a foreign policy expert. But you and I and the American taxpayers have been paying the salary of the Afghan military for 20 years. Yeah. And most of that money didn't go to the military. It went to their corrupt bosses. Totally corrupt bosses. Yeah. And so the idea that, you know, there's an old joke about that goes back to Italy, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to buy a, an Arvan rifle, never been fired, only dropped once. Want to buy an Afghan army rifle, never been fired, only dropped once. I'm not saying people who fought on our side are are not brave. They were. They are. I'm not saying we shouldn't evacuate them out of the country as quickly as possible and screw the visa considerations, get them out of there. We absolutely should. I'm saying there was no chance this was ever going to be anything other than a a, a, a run for the exit debacle mm-hmm. because that country was never going to be anything other than what it's been for thousands of years. Right. Period. And that's my opinion. And if you don't like it, well, I have others. <laughs> well, and I'd wanna, I want to go back and talk about the former guy for a minute. Because, yeah. of course, he and his son are experts now in Afghanistan sure. and on Hannity and so forth. And again, we have to thank Hal Sparks for watching the entire Sean Hannity, Donald Trump, uh, mentally defective interview. I mean, Trump is declining mentally. Uh-huh. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know that he until today that he had stopped a nuclear war. See, he's done all. Oh, he's you know everything is ever before. He used the words ever before mm-hmm. 
a hundred times during this interview. Mm -hmm. Never before, ever before. And, um, but it's important to run the history of what was happening and why he, the former guy, was doing what he was doing vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan and wanting to meet with the Taliban on 9-11 mm -hmm. and, and all these kind of things. He wanted a Nobel Peace Prize yeah. because Obama had one in his first term. And right. so I have to be as honored, as good. My, my inaugural size is 10 times better. My Nobel Peace Prize is 10 times better because it's based on really creating, quote unquote, peace. Um, and so he didn't include the Afghan uh, government mm -hmm. in the conversation. He released Taliban <laughs> terrorists from jail. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was all uh, an orchestrated reality TV show so that he would win a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. And you have to look at everything about him through that sieve, that he, he wanted what Obama had, because well, and, and, that's his whole presidency. And the reality TV Quote, show is the important part. I mean, it really yeah. is. I mean, you yeah. hit that right on the head, which is in On the Apprentice, it didn't matter how many badly he fucked up. Right. Because the editors would just fix it. Right. Or they'd rewrite the script so it ended the no, way it ended. And he, but, he, he continually fired the wrong person. Right. Because he didn't, didn't like him. Yeah. But, the, you know, we'll, we'll just rewrite the ending to suit whatever bumbling idiocy you did today. Right. And you figure, right. well, the world the world just works this way. No matter how badly I screw up, I'm not screwing up because it's me. So we'll just uh, we'll fix reverse it and edit it. Yes. Yeah, we'll we'll right. reverse engineer the outcome to what I was going to do. And we'll have a spectacle right. like January 6th that will make me president again. Right. And right. that is how he is mentally. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wanted to talk... Um, just because this is connected to all of this, my my old Rodney King story. Rodney King was brutalized by cops in California on camera, and you might not be old enough to remember that, um, but it I was am. really oh, you're not talking to, sorry, you're not talking to me. No, right? it really no. was the first time that someone recorded on tape for news consumption. You know, a video. There was video of police brutality. Um, yes, there was video in during the civil rights movement because there were actual news cameras during those marches. But mm -hmm. this was, you know, an individual making a video of police brutality. I was living in Massachusetts. It was after college at the time. And I remember calling my dad. And this was before the trial and the riots and everything that came after that. This was just seeing the video of Rodney King and saying to my dad, dad, I'm a white girl. You know, I was in my twenties. I'm a white girl in Massachusetts. And I don't know if I'm doing enough about what's happening in California with Rodney King. And obviously these police are out of control. I don't know, dad, if I'm doing enough, if I, if I should be doing more, I don't, and and I'm I'm really soul searching now to figure out do I care enough? You know that was that I I really want to know do I care enough about this? Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget what he said because it was one of those times when he was really wrong. And yeah. He said, well. "You know there is a system in place." This is what he said. "You know there is a system in place, a justice system, a, a court system, a leadership system to manage." the justice for Rodney King. And that's enough. And, and basically he said, you can trust the judicial system to take care of this because that's why we have government and leadership and so forth. And you participate in elections and you make sure that you vote, you're voting the right way and so forth. And of course that was such a white answer. Yeah. This is America. Damn it. Yeah. This is America. Well, right. You can't, have, just you can't just done. commit a crime on camera and get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a white cop, you can. Sure. You can. This is not a crime. <laughs> You know, it's only it, and and again, this is what twenty, twenty five, thirty years later. Uh -huh. That um, thirty years later, really, mm -hmm. yeah. That we have one cop that's gone to prison mm -hmm. <laughs> because he committed a horrible crime on camera and killed a guy. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, it was just such a white answer. Well, I I was brought back to that this week because Junior Dude is on the other side of the country. He's in yeah. Washington State. Yes, he is, and he's twenty two. And he's calling me. He's called me several times this week. 
distraught over what's going on in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our, he says, he's saying things like, look, mom, you don't understand, mom, (laughs) our allies will never trust us again. And he's distraught about leaving Americans behind as we all are. He's distraught Mm -hmm. about leaving translators behind as we all are. And he's just distraught about our position in the world because we have committed and then abandoned a commitment. And I had to remind him that there is an Afghan government that was supposed to be, you know, we invested a lot of money and 20 years of training so Mm -hmm. that they would defend their country against this. And they didn't. And Mm -hmm. they conned us. Well, the, maybe that's too yeah, strong a word. <laughs> well, no, it's not too strong a word. It's it's if if you're in on your own con, right, right. If you're if you're protecting your ass, if you're covering your ass for making a, a monumental, monumentally bad mistake mm-hmm. by okay, here's the deal. It's more like blackmail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I agree not to you know <laughs> point out to the world that there's no fucking way. That this country is ever going to be what you think it is. Self-governing as a minute, as a modern democracy right. with women's leave, rights and yeah. The minute you leave, it's all going to fall apart as long as you keep paying me off. Yeah, yeah. So you're, we're paying protection to a bunch of warlords, which yeah. is you know the worst way to run a country I can think of. Mm-hmm. So, um, I just having that conversation with him and and also uh, not wanting. <laughs> Not wanting to sound like my dad 20, 30 years ago, you know, of just trust the process. Uh-huh. Uh, but I did tell him, you know, what is happening now is not what's going to be happening five years from now. Right. And I think you said something to the effect of remember what Cicero said. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah. You know, the world has always been going to hell in a handbasket, right. right. young man. You know, yes. I mean, that sounds cold and that sounds uncaring about what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the other side of the world, and our uh, responsibility and complicity for that, our at meaning the United States. Well, and, uh, and and this is why history is important. Remembering yeah. the past, because it does. I mean, it it can be disconcerting and it can be depressing, uh, and and all of the things that make all the people who want to ban discussions of Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. and critical CRT, race theory class. in the classroom, all the, thi- all the things that make them cringe at the mm-hmm. thought of, you know, America did something wrong once and we, we should never talk about it. Mm-hmm. That is just the worst mm-hmm. because you're setting people up for enormously false expectations about what we're going to do next. Right. Because we are a right. flawed country. But but you the only way to learn and move forward is to understand history, understand why things are the way they are how they got there mm-hmm. and and what reasonably you can do next to mitigate the screw ups that mm-hmm. your country and the world committed in the past there's yeah. no other way there's no other teaching method there's no beta test for earth where you can you can take earth and put it in a test environment and test out all the possible things that'll happen the best we've got is science and history and the human imagination and we've got 39% of the public that's brainwashed against all of those well, things and, well, and I do want to talk about that a little bit, mm-hmm. only because tangentially, we are watching The Good Lord Bird. Which came out a couple of years ago. You yeah. may have already seen it, um, but it's on Hulu now if you it's want on to. It's Hulu now, and it's, it's, it's really good. It's, it's Ethan really Hawke. It's really good. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You will enjoy it or not as your tastes go. But it's but, Ethan Hawke as John Brown. Yes, as the John Brown, the John Brown. Yeah, I don't want to be John Brown. Abolitionist, religious nut, John Brown. Yeah, and every episode we've seen so far has been riveting and wonderful and funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just you know, it's it's a dark story, but it's very funny. But there is this moment when he has he's visiting Frederick Douglass at the dinner table, and Frederick Douglass looks at him like another fucking white savior mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. rebukes him hard for thinking that he knows what a slave. A person who's been owned and beaten and savaged and run uh, will or will not do under particular circumstances, as if you know what a slave will do, having never been one yourself. And John Brown, to his credit, agrees with Frederick Douglass. Mm-hmm. But he shoots back that he does know the mind of the slave holder. Mm-hmm. And he does know what it will take to end slavery. Yeah, and he it's knows gonna, it's going to take blood. It's going to take, yeah, take a war. It's going to take a war to get the white man to take his foot off the neck of the black man. Yeah. Because he sees, he, he tells a story about 
the the young black man who was beaten to death in his front yard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he saw the hatred and rage and um, sense of property in the slave holder's eyes. And in much the same way, we can't tell people what they should think or believe who are not, who I haven't lived through your circumstances. But I can tell you, having lived among conservatives and Republicans and wing nuts and the media all my life, I can tell you that you're never going to reach an accommodation with people who don't believe that you are fit to live in their country. Mm-hmm. You're never, mm-hmm. and you're never going to get the media to tell the truth about what's going on in this country, right? As long as they look at these these lunatics as customers, right? As as dick pill customers, right? Yeah, that's, that's just never going to happen. So no matter what happens, the worst spokespeople on the right in the media will be forgiven and forgiven and given a free pass over and over and over again forever until mm-hmm. something really drastic happens. Some very, very large break with our own past happens, which I hope will not involve bloodshed. But it is clear that there is just a hardcore, disturbingly large number of people in this country who are not fit to be citizens of this country, mm-hmm. who are not competent to be citizens of this country. And there's a very large section of the media that panders to them. Yeah. As a market-based economy will. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And I don't know if I, if you want me to talk about Michael Gerson. Well, do you want me to talk about Spirited Away first? Or do you I want do. To talk about- I very much do. That was the top of our notes and we just got carried away. So why don't you get us <laughs> – why don't you spirit us away with a well, with a refreshing talk about American Christianity? Well, because because this came up in last week's episode, yeah, and uh, I found because I have a stack of them in my reading area. Um, March eleventh, twenty twenty one, the New York Review of Books has an article called "Spirited Away" by Anne Enright, which, in which she is reviewing two books. But the first book is called "How God Becomes Real." Kindling the Presence of Invisible Others by T.M. Lerman. And T.M. Lerman is an anthropologist who studies faith communities. Um, Anne Enright says uh, her insights into the experience of American charismatic Christianity are slightly sad. These are people who believe that God speaks to them directly. It is easy to think of them as being full of certainty, perhaps even grandiosity. But in particular, she studies a Horizon Christian Fellowship in Southern California, where nearly every member is a recovering addict. And because they're a recovering addict um, and a right-wing Republican, the, the combination is important. You know, Orange County, right-wing Republican. Uh, they believe that they've, they've recovered from um, addiction all by themselves with no help from anybody. It's bootstrap time. And so welfare is an addiction, too, and people need to get over that and heal themselves and pull themselves up. Mm -hmm. And this article says, uh, Lerman Riley notes that for these believers, God seems to be a member of the National Rifle Association. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But the the part that really kicked it in for me was the sentence from her book. Um, And again, she's not necessarily talking about specific religions. She's just really interested in how does one get to a point where one believes that God is talking to you? And she says that she's writing about that as an anthropologist, not as somebody, a political person or someone who's passing judgment on her subjects. But she wants to figure out what is it in someone's background, in someone's nature and nurture that makes them believe. And and she's studying it as as a scientist. But in her book, she says this, and this to me, this really spoke to me about our, our podcast and, you know, the past 612 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> People evangelize because they fear that the belief to which they have committed themselves may not be true. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot of in the MAGA movement. Yeah. Trump lost. He took our money. Mm-hmm. He didn't build a wall. He didn't no. stop Obamacare, but we got to double down and right. we got to fight harder because God's on our side. And we, we, it's a failure of faith, not a failure of our belief system. Right. Well, and I mean, I don't want to take it back to 1865 like Mary Trump because, <laughs> but you can take it back to the Clinton administration. Yeah. You know, Clinton was, again, cast your mind back to the Clinton years. Mm-hmm. Clinton was the devil. Clinton was a pot smoking, socialist, Mm -hmm. communist, foreigner loving, 
hypocrite who murdered his political opponents and dealt drugs on the side. And because the right needs a tangible, visible, scary enemy, like they had during the Cold War, it was the commies. And when the Cold War took all of their commies away, they needed someone to be the devil, and they made it into Bill and Hillary Clinton. And yet, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, survived eight years. Didn't impeach him, didn't get rid of him, didn't undercut him. And as a rebuke to that horrible human being, they, they, they elected um, George W. Bush. Mm-hmm. instead of electing Al Gore. And if Al Gore had been elected, a whole bunch of problems now would not be problems now. Um, and yet, eight years of Bush didn't cure them, <laughs> didn't cure the United States of its horrible addiction to liberalism and communism and socialism. And then Barack Obama shows up. And what they had to deal with at the end of the Bush administration was their complete failure. Mm-hmm. Complete fucking mm-hmm. failure. Remember, mm-hmm. Clinton was the, the Clinton was ordered by the markets and by everyone around him to clean up Republican deficit messes before he got to do anything. Yeah. So Clinton, okay, Clinton has to clean up Republican messes. But once he's done with that, nope. Once he's done that, we're going to put George Bush into office who's going to who's going to create the same problems but worse. And tell and tell his convention right. that the surplus is your money it's and your we're money. going to get rid of the surplus. Don't worry. That's my number one priority, getting rid of that darn surplus. You know that's your money. Um and so after 8 years of catastrophic global fuck-ups, uh, which there's no way they could live down. Once again, the right is humiliated because a guy enacts everything they want and it turns out to be a disaster. Mm-hmm. And they they go into hiding for two minutes, come out as independents and the Tea Party, and they freak out again because the Democrats elect a competent centrist to clean up Republican messes. Um, and they have an eight-year um, primal scream of racism that he's black and he's a Democrat and he's out to destroy America and he's a communist and he's trying to murder your white grandma. Wasn't even born here, blue gal. And this cycle just repeats itself over and over again because these people cannot accept that their fundamental belief system is the problem. Mm-hmm. They are the problem. It's not some exterior thing. It's not something that God has put in their minds. They, What they believe in is what's fucked up. And as long as they keep believing that if we just elect an even crazier motherfucker, <laughs> then it'll all work out. Okay, okay, Bush didn't work. Let's elect Trump. That, that's a great idea. Let's do that. And and after four years of failure, even more of them come out to vote for Trump than came out in the first election. Yeah. So they are incurably fucked in the head. There's no saving these people from themselves. The only thing you can do is sequester them using votes and laws and executive orders and whatever else, whatever means you have at hand, protect this country from them mm-hmm. until there are not enough of them to cause us trouble. But it's just going to be that way for a really long time. Well, and, one, and when you do that, then they do a recall election in California. Right. And and you have to double down and fight harder because that there's always some sneaky way that they'll find to backtrack their loss. Right. And and it wasn't a loss, and 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 now I have to go back to Mary Trump because it is 1865, right? Because it's the lost cause. Yeah, yeah. It's you know it's we were we were it, it, they were stabbed in the back. Yeah, they could have won, yeah. and it's the same goddamn people passing this down like hemophilia from generation mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. generation to mm-hmm. generation, and it won't stop until it is stopped. Until being that sort of person is so shameful that you won't admit it in public. All right, you but you're making a really important point there. I want to put a tack in that one okay. because I th- I think Rachel Bittacoffer is exactly right. Mm-hmm. There are so many people in this country who are not political, who don't think about it between elections, who don't want to think about it. Mm-hmm. And the only way you win with, with a decisive enough victory mm-hmm. is to brand your opponent as uncool. Right. That's very true. And so we have to continually remind our apolitical <laughs> friends. Yeah. This isn't about convincing Republicans to do anything. It's about convincing no. our apolitical friends that if you don't use the ballot against them, they'll take away everything you have. That's right. Absolutely true. And the way we get the way that that cycle perpetuates itself uh-huh. is not allowing people or the way that I'm sorry, the way you stop that cycle is by not allowing people to pretend the past never happened. Right. Right. And that it's not both sides. Right. 
Drift Class, we have five minutes before we have to do News Roundup. Okay. So you tell me what you want to do next, and I'm going to I set think, a timer. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, it's hard because I'm, I'm flipping a coin between Michael Gerson and Matthew Dowd, but I think I'm going to do Matthew Dowd. All right. Um, Matthew Dowd, as many of you might know, uh, has been a subject of my blog and this podcast for a number of years. And that's because Matthew Dowd was the absolute king of both sides do it. Both siderism, both siderism, you know, Hillary Clinton is just as bad as Trump. I'm a third party and corrupt, you know, destroy the corrupt duopoly, blah, 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 blah. That's his thing. And he's also now that he has completely changed his position on everything. He, he, he is deep believer in, in, in excavating the past and understanding how this all happened to us and who did what and my God, the media is so terrible. And he, um, a few weeks ago, he was uh, on MSNBC, and he he's on he's on MSNBC because his good friend from the Bush administration, Nicole Wallace, has her own show there, where she invites a bunch of Bush regime dead enders who change costume and are now resistance fighters to rehabilitate their reputation. And he comes on the show, and um, suddenly Matthew Dowd is a completely different person. Because he doesn't work for ABC News anymore. Now he's looking for a job clearly at MSNBC. And so he says things like, we have to stop treating this like some game where the opposite sides of each are the same. And he he starts this Jeremiah about both sides do it and it's ridiculous. And we have to stop presenting people who are crazy as if they're two equal partners because they're not. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Except for the fact that Matthew Dowd absolutely does not believe that five minutes ago. And he's not casual about it. He was a fanatic about it. He and Ron Fournier spent the entire 2016 election preaching that both sides are bad, both sides are terrible, both sides are rotten, both sides are wretched. And people who pointed out to him that this was incredibly lazy journalism and potentially very toxic, like me, got personally attacked by him. Mm -hmm. And my, my readers got attacked by him. And and his his theory was both sides are really bad. Therefore, the corrupt duopoly is the enemy. Therefore, we've got to disrupt the system by voting third party. It's the only way out. Mm -hmm. And most voters who support Trump are decent, sensible patriots. There's a few fringes out there, but that was his core philosophy. And, and all of that was out of hatred for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. I well, mean, and, and the fact that he was the architect of George Bush's despicable 2004 gay bashing reelection campaign mm -hmm. is another thing that we've just sort of forgotten about. La, Matthew la, 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 la. Very inconvenient to remember that shit because now he's talking about, you know, the the people who got us into the, the, the Afghanistan need to be held accountable. <laughs> uh, who are the, well, you are those people, asshole. <laughs> well, and he used to rain down this shit like with the fervor of an Old Testament prophet. And I was looking for a quote from him. I, I was actually going through some Matthew Dowd posts I did to try to put together a, a new one. I noticed that all of the tweets that I had embedded were now just plain text, which means the original tweets were gone. Ah. So I thought, well, that's interesting. Uh, Matthew Dowd has purged every single thing he ever tweeted prior to July of this year. This, you mean 2021? 2021. With one exception. There's one bizarre exception from June. I, I did my research from June uh, of 2018 about polling, national poll, completely innocuous tweet. Mm -hmm. Everything prior to this summer, he wiped out. It's gone. The only place you can find the plain text remnants of these posts is at driftglass.blogspot.com. <laughs> Seriously, there's it, it's all gone, and and I thought, well, Jesus Christ, that's 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 pretty drastic. That's pretty incredible. But here's the thing, Mr. Dowd has spent his entire adult life compiling a truly epic record of fucking up and not knowing what he's doing in politics, um, which is, I feel compelled to state, his one job. He's terrible at his one job. But he's a member of the Beltway Insider Club. Yeah. And he's a very good friend of Nicole Wallace. No matter how badly he has screwed up and embarrassed himself and gotten everything wrong, a place must be pound, found for him at the table. So he needs to do three things. He needs to get rid of his past, rehabilitate his reputation, and do so on camera. Which is not hard because on the air, he's surrounded by people who are members of the same conspiracy. Who are each sworn to protect the other's lies about their inconvenient past. Nobody asked Mike Schmidt or Steve Schmidt about his past. Nobody brings up Nicole Wallace believing torture is perfectly okay when Bush does it. Oh, this is, we're just all going to pretend that never happened. On social media, it's not really a problem either because Matthew Dad will immediately block 
anyone who brings up anything that happened during the before time. But, and this is all, these are all the tweets when he was the official ABC News chief political analyst. That this was the official voice of ABC News. And it's all gone now. Hmm. The one thing he couldn't control was the Twitter archives. Because assholes like me will go through someone's Twitter history and say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you just say this like a few years ago? And isn't, don't you have to sort of, you know, explain what you're doing? And Matthew Dowd decided the simplest and easiest thing to do is just wipe it all out. So as I wrote in my post, without any hint of contrition, confession, repentance, or atonement, the very, very Catholic Matthew Dowd went straight to absolution, Mm -hmm. absolved himself of his toxic past by simply wiping it out and pretending it never happened. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. what happens when you wipe your entire past out and pretend it never happened, you were never part of the problem, now you think that those people doing both sides stuff are the worst people in the world, and how could anyone countenance that? You get people saying... And I've just picked a tweet at random. This is such an excellent point by Matthew Dowd. I so appreciate his intellectual <laughs> honesty. The Democrats need to listen to Dowd. Yeah. And there's 40 or 50 people agreeing with it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I know it's a, I know it's a fight I cannot win. But it it galls me that such a deeply, deeply dishonest hack who is a political and moral windsock who blows whichever say, way the wind is yeah, blowing. He will um, blow – Whatever way is going to put money in his pocket. Yep. And, and and will be rehabilitated just like David Gregory rehabilitated Newt Gingrich over and over again mm-hmm. because he has mm-hmm. friends on the inside who will polish up his turd and put it on TV. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of people who don't care about anything he said before today. Mm-hmm. All I care about is, well, he's Nicole's best friend and he's, he's, he's leader of some movement called Country Over Party, which isn't actually a movement. It's a hashtag. Yeah. But he's the leader of their movement. Um, and now he's, you know, this, he's NBC, uh, MSNBC's righteous man who takes a scourge of those both ciderists and tells, and tells it like it's, like it is blue gal. And I just, I'm so tired. So who is he going to support in the Re- Republican primary for president in 2024? Uh, no, it's Democrats only. Only Democrats can save us. Hey, you know what? I appreciate people yeah. who, who are willing to say what we were saying 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. I, it, 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 it pisses me off in ways I cannot express, that these people just fucking lie about the past. People who, who say I'm people sorry, should- I bet you 10 bucks drift glass that between now and 2024, Matthew Dowd is going to say, yeah, but you know, Tom Cotton has a, one good point He's about good point. blah, 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 American strength. Well, and if you're going to just obliterate your past and use your cronies to help you pretend it never happened, mm-hmm. then keep mm-hmm. the word accountability and history out of your fucking mouth. Yep. Because yep. you clearly don't believe in that for you. You believe in it for everyone else. But and so a traitor you, like Tom Cotton will have good points. Sure he will. When it comes to running for president. Yep. Absolutely he will. Yep. And next week I will entertain you all with a story of Michael Gerson. <laughs> or they, you can go to driftglass.blogspot.com and read about it, right? Oh, don't do that. Because I much <laughs> prefer reading my own work. <laughs> You'll have another post to read next week. I, I don't get to go on Meet the Press and have um, Chuck Todd read my work for me and ask me what I think of it. I think so. I need to teach you sound editing so you can record your stuff and just put up. Because <laughs> some people do that. Some people uh-huh. at their blogs will put up an audio of their blog. And, you know, that might be a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I need. I need more stuff to do like that. Listen to this post and you can click play and listen to you read it. People would love that. Hey, Driftcast, let's do a news roundup. Okay. The Biden administration announced that it will require nursing home staff to be vaccinated against COVID-19 as a condition for those facilities to continue receiving federal Medicare and Medicaid funding. Yeah, the opposite of death panels. Mm -hmm. Um, The same Biden administration is now implementing the largest permanent increase in food stamps in the program's history. The U.S. will advise most Americans to get booster vaccine shots eight months after they receive their original dose. And we will be getting ours. Don't Mm -hmm. you worry about that. Mm -hmm. A Texas school district has made face masks part of its dress code in order to get around Governor Abbott's anti-mask mandate order. The Biden administration will use a federal civil rights office to deter states from banning universal masking in classrooms. Uh, uh, Texas COVID-19 hospitalizations have increased by 400% in the last month. Biden says he stands behind his decision to withdraw from Afghanistan after the Taliban regained control over the country. Uh, U.S. military commanders hid fatal flaws 
in the Afghan army and police forces for more than a decade. The New York Attorney General says the NRA must be dissolved after failing to clean up misconduct. Uh, Initial unemployment claims fell further last week to the lowest level since March of 2020, which brings the level of weekly new filings closer to the pre-pandemic level. 81% of voters surveyed support requiring every voter to show a photo ID to cast a ballot. Support for voter ID laws rose by four percentage points from March to July, and it increased by 13 percentage points among black voters surveyed. Among whom was Stacey Abrams, who made a very clear look, as long as 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 you're not using IDs as a barrier to voting, mm -hmm. as a poll tax to voting. Mm -hmm. And if that's what it takes to get voting rights passed, cool, we'll do it. Because that's the important thing. As I've talked about before, Mm -hmm. if that is the gateway to online registration, where you have to insert, as we do in Illinois, Mm -hmm. your driver's license number or other proof of who you are, and you get to register for vote by mail online, and they will mail your ballot to the address on your driver's license, which proves, you know, that means you're not some rando gathering ballots. You're getting a ballot at the address where you are already registered with the government and proven that that's where you live. Mm -hmm. That's just securing vote by mail. That's opening the process, not closing it down. Yeah. And if you live in a state or, or, or if the federal government mandates that you have to make voter IDs free and widely available to mm-hmm. anybody who's qualified mm-hmm. to get them, right. fine. I got no problem with that. If, if you want to make it as easy as easier than me getting a high V rewards card, right. fine. That's fine. But it's when it's clear that voter ID laws are being used to keep people from voting, right. to scare people away from voting. And that's always been the Republican strategy. They mm-hmm. don't because there, there is no there is no election integrity problem in this country. It's right. negligible. There has never been. Well, this except all- for the people who vote for Trump for their dead wife, because she right. would have wanted it that way. Well, and Ann Coulter, who was you know broke the yeah. law, voted right. in the wrong state. But it's usually Republicans who are committing these crimes. Yeah. Um, and if we can just stop Republicans from fucking around with our elections, I'm for that. Um, speaking of people who are screwing with our elections, new intelligence reports indicate that Russia is making fresh efforts to interfere in the 2022 election. California gubernatorial candidate Larry Elder said employers should be able to ask women if and when they plan to get pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that person in charge of your government, California. No. Vote no on question one. Leave question two blank. The election is in September. Make sure you vote. And in local news... uh, at the Illinois State Fair, we had something yeah. called Republican Day. Yeah, Democrat we... Day was yesterday, and uh-huh. uh, a Democratic senator named John Ossoff was there speaking. Came, uh, but yeah. it was invitation only, so we weren't allowed to go. Yeah, we were hitting up. We're going to hit up some of our you know important friends. Obama just isn't returning my calls like he used to. <laughs> Clinton swears he never met me, which I, I know, know isn't him. true. <laughs> Um, new phone who dis, <laughs> but you know, it was kind of, it was, we had a busy week what with driving and having the van oh, break taking, down on us a bunch oh, of other yeah, stuff. We had car trouble yesterday. Yeah. Thank goodness. We had car trouble after we got back from taking middle child really? to college. And it was, it was, it was like dying in a parking lot car trouble with yeah. no hope of, of, of restarting it. Um, yeah, yeah. and really I sat, I discovered the air conditioning, it was blowing, but not working when the temperature in the car went up to 110. Yeah, yeah. And I, but I was near air conditioning. Uh, they found the problem and they fixed it. Um, and it, it was, I, I sat there literally going, it is so yeah. fortunate that this didn't happen yesterday or the day before. We were yeah. transporting a uh, middle child up to college. So, yeah. Yeah. or it happened today, which is our anniversary. Our wedding anniversary. So pick Happy the right anniversary, day. Happy anniversary, honey. Happy anniversary. But this week, uh, we have Republican Day at the fair. And Paul Palzolo, who is the Sangamon County Circuit Clerk, entertained his fellow Republicans at the Illinois State Fair with sexual harassment jokes. He said a peeping Tom threw up on Nancy Pelosi's windowsill, comparing oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger to Hitler and telling fat jokes about J.B. Pritzker. Because, you know, Illinois Republicans, classy with a K, all the way down the line. Oh, he's a laugh riot. Yeah. He is. He is. And he's run for office a lot and lost a lot. So, uh, but, you know, <laughs> hope springs a turtle, honey. Hope springs mm-hmm. a turtle. Mm-hmm. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Jenny. 
Jenny, in addition to being an internet kitty, has another very important job, dear class. Uh She is an emotional support pet for a teen on the spectrum. And this teenager is starting their freshman year of college next week. What? So congratulations to the Jenny's teenager. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just had to have Jenny as internet kitty this week because we know for a lot of people, college is starting. Mm -hmm. And we all need emotional support. (laughs) Yes, we do. So, uh, Jenny, you can visit Jenny at our Facebook page and website. And, of course, Jenny Eats Freshly Poured Cat Food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Jenny again at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag. Why isn't DeJoy in the jail? And uh, by the way, our friends at Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington have won a lawsuit this week to get DeJoy's records, I believe. Um, if you want to follow them, they're at, cr- at Crew Crew on Twitter. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity, this is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal, postal address information, it's all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have noticed that we're down to only one teenager in the house and want to know when this madness will end. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovin'. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.